Good afternoon, Chairman May, Commissioners, Director Gibbs, Director Davis. My name is Shane Frank, and I'm a wildlife research scientist for Colorado Parks and Wildlife and within the Mammals Research Section. I'm also the project leader for CPW's Bobcat Research in the state, on which I was asked to give an update and overview today. Um, first, though, I wanted to recognize the people that are making the research possible. My colleagues at CPW include Jake Ivan, a fellow mammals researcher, Mark Biera, the fur bear and carnivore manager, and John Runge, CPW's biostatistician. They helped shape the scope and objectives of the project. In the field, Area 6 staff have been very supportive with the work and helped us hit the ground running with <clears throat> excuse me, knowledge about the local landscape and, of course, introducing us to the local stakeholders stakeholders constituents which is a good segue into thanking them uh, particularly local hunters trappers and other land users and the private landowners whose permission make this project possible the colorado trapper predator hunter association and their members have also been instrumental in giving the project personnel a jump start into trapping for research purposes their on the ground knowledge is not readily found in textbooks but is immensely helpful for for our work this leads to the seasonal staff that work hard in the field during inclement weather and facing unforeseen challenges. Uh, they are greatly appreciated for their efforts in the field. Today, I wanted to briefly talk about bobcat ecology in Colorado, the motivation for the research, uh, the research objectives, how we collect the data, as well as inform about where we are in the project in terms of progress and, and timeline. The first word that comes to mind when thinking of bobcats is versatile. They are twice the size of a house cat and average about 20, 24 pounds. This somewhat small size allows them to effectively conceal themselves and stock prey, but they are also quite formidable predators. They are generalist carnivores that prey upon small rodents, rabbits, hares, birds, snakes, fawns, and the occasional adult deer. They also appear to be effective scavengers. Perhaps Oops, that mistake. Perhaps owing to their flexibility in diet, they are regarded as the widest ranging wild felid in North America. Within, within their distribution, their densities range from as little to four to as many as 62 bobcats per 100 square kilometers. And 100 square kilometers is slightly bigger than a township or six by six uh, mile area. Uh, in Colorado, Bobcat range covers virtually the entire state, um, and CPW expects that there are around 15 bobcats per 100 square kilometers, which was originally based on estimates from other states in comparable habitat types. That said, in 2009-2011, a PhD student out of CSU estimated bobcat densities for step several study areas in Colorado, which ranged from around 15 to 24 bobcats per 100 square kilometers. The expected bobcat density of 15 per 100 square kilometers combined with research findings from another state on the effect of legal harvest on bobcat populations has helped, helped set the mortality, mortality density monitoring guideline for harvest in Colorado. This is one of the five bobcat monitoring guidelines CPW evaluates each year. Uh, bobcat harvest should not exceed 17% or 17% uh, of bobcat density or 2.55 bobcats per 100 square kilometers in any of the bobcat management areas, um, which are color coded uh, here on the bottom left. To date, this harvest threshold has not been exceeded. So why, why is CPW conducting bobcat research? Like many of the species that CPW manages, particularly elusive species like bobcats that are difficult to gather data on, we are forced to make assumptions as part of our management strategies. However, we, we recognize opportunities to gather additional information that can be used to possibly refine bobcat management. CPW has committed to five years of funding towards bobcat research. The research began in fall of 2023, the status of which I will touch on in a little bit. The goal of the research is to better understand bobcat density and habitat relationships in addition to the role of harvest legacy and prey density. A high harvest legacy is referring to areas where bobcats have been consistently harvested for three years or more, whereas low harvest legacy is where bobcats are harvested very little or not at all. Despite dietary flexibility, bobcats are suggested to have a preference for rabbits or hares, and when I refer to hares, I'm really meaning jackrabbits that are part of the hare family, 
and bobcat population density might respond to the changing availability of such prey. Although habitat type, for example, pinion juniper community might correspond well to higher bobcat densities compared to other habitat types, prey density and harvest legacy can further influence their numbers. Moreover, legal harvest is not the only mortality source for bobcats. Other mortality sources include roadkill, disease predators or competitors, including bobcats themselves. Elucidating the relative influence of these mortality types in conjunction with the legal harvest can help us understand how bobcat population densities can fluctuate over space and time. In addition, better understanding bobcat density habitat relationships can help us derive refined estimates, density estimates in areas where we have not collected data. Our research objectives are to estimate bobcat density across several habitat types and harvest legacies, estimate cause-specific bobcat mortality, estimate sex ratio and age composition of the bobcat study population, determine bobcat diet, and estimate primary prey, rabbit and hare density. This information can be potentially applied for management purposes as the overarching aim is to draw associations from harvest demographics and rabbit hare density with bobcat density to identify potential indicators of bobcat population change. Such associations could be used to refine harvest thresholds. In addition, bobcat density habitat associations would allow us to extrapolate reasonable bobcat densities to other areas of the state where similar habitat composition occurs. Although this research is geared toward potential management application, it also provides information on basic bobcat ecology in Colorado, such as home range size, movement, resource selection, and as I already mentioned, diet. So how are we collecting these data? We already have mandatory seal checks during which CPW collects information on harvested bobcats, sex, age class, and the location time of harvest. But the sex ratio and age structure of the underlying population might be different than those harvested. Therefore, we selected a focal habitat type in two study areas of similar topography and habitat composition, one with high and the other with low harvest legacy, low harvest legacy within, within which to sample a bobcat study population. We sample the bobcat population in each study area using capture mark techniques via live captures. We also apply so-called marks to the bobcats principally by fitting them with GPS collars and ear tags, which are recognizable on camera. Within each study area, we set up 100 cameras that take pictures of both marked and unmarked bobcats. The resulting data and camera recapture rates of each marked and unmarked bobcats allow us to estimate population density for each study area. During captures, we collect sex and age class information as well as take biological samples, such as guard hairs that can be analyzed for dietary composition using stable isotopes. We also conduct line transects, walking several straight lines across the study areas and record direct observation of rabbits, hares, which allow us to estimate their density. In fall of 2022, we started the first year of the project. We selected two study areas, each 20 by 20 kilometers, one with high and another with low harvest legacy in Northwest Colorado near Meeker and Dinosaur National Monument, respectively. The focal habitat uh, bobcat predominating habitat type was pinion juniper, but this often co-occurs with sagebrush, sagebrush communities, meaning these two habitat types act together as one or a habitat mosaic. These communities are regarded as preferred habitat for the species in Colorado. We captured 39 bobcats, including recaptures, and fitted 21 unique individuals with GPS collars and collected several hundred thousand images from the, from the cameras. The severe winter precluded access to most of the low harvest, low harvest legacy study area for captures and for camera setup. We focused on the study area with high harvest legacy where the majority of captures occurred and where the full camera array was set up. Density estimation models are functioning for the better sampled study area, but estimates are preliminary due to a lack of complete sampling coverage from severe winter conditions. The most recent field season started in fall 2023, just this last year. We have completed the camera grid set up for both study areas and will continue with captures through April this year. Rabbit hair transects are being conducted for the first time in each study area this winter. 
Bobcat and prey data from these study areas will be collected through the year 2025, at which point we will, in the fall, we will switch to another predominating habitat <clears throat> types or type, or two other study areas with high and low harvest legacies, where bobcat densities, mortality, diet, and rabbit hair density will be annually estimated for two more years. As a result, we will have bobcat densities for at least two predominating habitat types or habitat mosaics at two, at two harvest levels and each for at least two years. The second habitat type is yet to be determined, but will be selected based on land cover representation in Colorado and the ability to contrast high and low harvest legacies. And to explain this picture on the left, um, this whole project is somewhat of a learning curve. So this was the first pilot year and, and I, this was before I actually bought side panels for the side-by-sides, much to the chagrin of my techs, but uh, we got better. They're, they're a little bit warmer. Um, but yeah, if, if you have any questions, please uh, ask and I'll do my best to field them.